If you dropped a live round into a fire and just stood there, would you be in any real danger? Bullets are designed to kill after all, but they're not meant to be fired from a fire, which will definitely fire these rounds by the way. But these rounds are designed to be used in a gun, believe it or not, where the bullet is fired by a small firing pin which strikes the primer whenever you pull the trigger. The primer is usually full of an explosive chemical called lead stiphonate, which is sensitive to shock and heat. So when hit by the firing pin, it detonates, generating enough heat to set off the main propellant, which is composed of nitrocellulose or smokeless powder. The nitrocellulose doesn't exactly detonate, but it does burn rapidly, generating pressure. When this happens inside of a gun, all that pressure builds up in the barrel behind the bullet, forcing it out at a high speed. But outside of a gun, there's no barrel to contain any pressure, so as soon as the bullet leaves the cartridge, most of the pressure generated will escape in all directions, leaving the bullet much slower than intended. But it will still gain some kinetic energy, the only question is, is it enough to actually kill you? To find out, I'll need a participant to test each of these rounds on without using a barrel. And I think this ballistics gel head is the closest thing to real human tissue I could obtain without going to prison. I'll be using this spring-loaded mechanism to suspend the rounds in the air as I fire them safely from behind this strong American wall. So without further ado, I'll start with the smallest round, the 22, which only contains this much nitrocellulose. Awesome, here's the slow-mo footage. It, it didn't work at all, probably because I'm using a 40 pound spring. So I think plan B is going to be fire, which I think will be better for this experiment anyway. Alright, I believe the bullet hit right here, and it appears that no damage has been done. And I will say, although ballistics gel is a pretty good representation of flesh, it doesn't represent skin very well. Your skin is a little bit stronger than this, so just keep that in mind. And as you can see, the casing has just completely blown itself apart. And this is probably one of the more dangerous things about throwing bullets in fire, is the sharp shrapnel that'll fly everywhere. The bullet itself is a lot heavier than the casing, so the casing will have a tendency to fly off a lot faster than the bullet. But as for the bullet itself, I would say it would probably hurt more to be shot by a BB gun. But can the same be said for a 9mm? Okay, I honestly wasn't expecting this, but the bullet did bounce off and it ripped a nice little chunk out of the left eye socket there. I'm also seeing tiny granules sprayed everywhere and I'm pretty sure that's unburnt nitrocellulose. The barrel of a gun not only helps direct pressure behind the bullet, but it also contains the heat and pressure so that all the nitrocellulose can fully react. In this case, only a fraction of the nitrocellulose was burnt, and the rest was likely sprayed out everywhere. It also completely unraveled the wire for me, which is nice. I also placed a piece of cardboard behind it to see if any of the shrapnel from the casing would go through it, and four pieces of sharp shrapnel did indeed go through that cardboard. I'm going to try a 9mm one more time, but in the other direction, so we could see what the shrapnel from the casing might do to the ballistics gel head. Well, I found the shrapnel from the previous test. It uh, put a hole in the bottom of the candle and leaked wax out everywhere. Yes! Okay, it looks like the primer casing has wedged itself about half an inch into the other eye socket. I personally find that penetration depth quite impressive. As for the bullet, I have no idea where it went. But now that this guy is blind, he's not gonna see what's coming next. This is the Blazer 38 Special, and it has a bullet size a bit smaller than the 9mm, but the diameter is about the same, and it's a little bit longer. Okay, this poor guy's eyes are just getting wrecked today. I do see some internal tearing, but nothing much on the surface other than an imprint of the bullet. 
The next test is going to be with the 357 Magnum, which is pretty similar to the 38 Special, just a bit taller. And once again, I'll be pointing the casing towards D Madness over here. Alright, the bullet went off in some unpredictable direction, and here's what's left of the casing. I'm really curious as to what these will do, and this honestly terrifies me, so let's start with the 12-gauge shotgun shell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you've never seen a sawed-off shotgun this sawed-off before. Alright, so all that did was melt the plastic and ignite a little bit of the nitrocellulose, and that's probably what's going to happen most of the time if these are thrown into a fire, so I think I'm going to go back to this method, because, I don't know, maybe these 22 rounds were duds or something. Alright, let's just try the 7mm round. Okay, so of course the casing is completely blown apart. It took off a decent chunk of the wood here, and I believe that's an imprint from the primer. And it doesn't look like much happened to the head that time, other than being sprayed with a bunch of unburnt nitrocellulose. But let's try that one more time and point the primer towards it. Okay, well unfortunately, I didn't account for the copper wire heating up, which increased its malleability and began to bend under the weight of the bullet. But the ballistic gel head did get a little scratch up here, which is probably from the primer. And the primer is right here. So it did not make it through the cardboard. As for the bullet, it made just a little dent here in the wood, tore up the cardboard a bit, and it flung the piece of wood I was using to hold it down, I would say about four and a half feet away. So can throwing live rounds into a fire actually kill you? No, probably not, but it could definitely send you to the hospital, so I would advise against it.